Nuruddin Muhammad Salim, popularly known to the masses by his imperial name Jahangir, was the fourth great Mughal emperor who ruled from 1605 after his father Akbar's death to his very own death in 1627. Like his father, Jahangir had an acute sense of right and wrong and is notably known for his chain of justice. After his accession to the Mughal throne, the first order Jahangir gave was the fastening up of the chain of justice. The idea behind this was that if those engaged in administration of justice should delay or practice hypocrisy in the matter of those seeking justice, the oppressed might come to his chain and shake it so that its noise might attract attention. It was made of pure gold, 27 meter in length and containing 60 bells. Its weight was around 150 kg. One end of it was made fast to the battlements of the Shah Burj of the fort of Agra and the other to a stone post fixed on the bank of the river. At the same time, Jahangir gave 12 orders to be observed as rules of conduct or dastur-e-amal in all his dominions and in this video we'll be talking about those. We can call those rules of conduct as Jahangir's 12 edicts. You're watching Royal Mughals and without wasting any more time, let's just get on with the video. Number one, forbidding the levy of cesses under the names of Tamgha and Mirbari and other burdens which the Jahagirdars of every province and district had imposed for their own profit. This order basically put a ban on imposing taxes like the Tamgha tax, which is basically a stem tax or a royal seal. It is a Turkish word, and this tax was imposed on the merchants when they entered or crossed the Mughal territories. while mirbari was the charge collected for port uses inside the mughal dominions this put an end to the profit exploitation by the mughal jagirdars who were holders of land assignments in lieu of judicial and police duties number 2 safety regulation of roads and stimulation of population by promoting settlements this order enforced the jagirdars to build sarais or public rest houses mosques and dig wells in those neighborhoods the roads thefts and robberies took place which were at a little distance from habitation this in turn stimulated population and allowed people to settle down in those sarais or public houses if these were near a khalisa estate or that means under direct state management the administration of that place was supposed to execute the work number 3 rights of merchants this simple rule prohibited the exploitation of merchants it maintained that no one was to open the packages of merchants on the roads without their consent this in turn helped avoid the exploitation of the merchants by the administration number 4 rights of inheritance of property this order maintains that in jahangir's empire if a muslim or a non-muslim dies his property and effects would be left for his heir no one should interfere with them if he should have no heir they should appoint inspectors and separate guardians to guard the property so that its value might be expended in a lawful expenditure such as the building of mosques and sarais repair of broken bridges and the digging of tanks and wells number 5 wine and all sorts of intoxicating liquor were forbidden and were prohibited to be made nor sold Jahangir in his memoirs have mentioned that he himself drank wine and has been an addict from the age of 18 till 38. He used to drink as much as 20 cups of double distilled spirit and when it started affecting him he ventured to lessen the quantity from 15 cups to 5 or 6 per day. Jahangir claimed that after the age of 30 he drank only to digest his food. Thus being aware of the consequences of drinking he took this decision to keep his administration efficient and reliable. Number 6 Prohibition of seizing houses This order was issued by Jahangir to keep any individual authority from taking possession of any person's house no one was permitted to take up one's abode in the dwelling of another Order number 7 Prohibition of cutting off the noses and ears of criminals In his memoir 
Tuzuk E. Jahangiri, the emperor, has mentioned that he has forbid the cutting of the noses or ears of any person, and he himself made a vow by the throne of God that he would not blemish anyone by punishment. Number 8. Prohibition of taking property of another without his consent. In his 8th edict, Jahangir gave an order that the officials of the crown lands and the Jagirdar should not forcibly take the farmer's lands and cultivate them on their own account. Number 9. Requirement of a special permission for Jagirdars to intermarry in their pargana. This order maintained that a government collector or a Jagirdar should not without the permission of the emperor intermarry with the people of the pargana or district in which he might be assigned to. As simple as that. Number 10. Building of hospitals and appointment of physicians to attend the sick. Jahangir ordered that his subjects should find hospitals in the great cities and physicians for the healing of the sick. Whatever the expenditure might be should be given from the royal treasury. Number 11. Prohibition of the slaughter of animals on certain days. In the Tujuki Jahangiri, the emperor mentions that in accordance with the regulation of his revered father, that is Akbar the Great, Jahangir ordered that each year from the 18th of Rabi Ulawal, which is his birthday, for a number of days corresponding to the years of his life, his subjects should not slaughter animals for food. Two days in each week were also forbidden, one of them Thursday, the day of his accession, and the other Sunday, the day of his father's birth. Jahangir states that Akbar held this day in great esteem and thus on this day, because it was dedicated to the sun and also because it was the day on which the creation began, therefore it was one of the days on which there was no killing in his dominion. The order was enforced and well documented. In his fifth regnal year, Jahangir repeated the order and was so strict about it that when in 1612 the Eid al-Adha occurred on a Thursday, he did not allow the ritual slaughter to take place on that day. It was held the day after. Number 12. General confirmation of commands and fiefs grants an amnesty for all prisoners in forts and prison. For his final order, Jahangir maintained that, that the offices and jagirs of his father, Akbar's servants, should remain as they were. Later, the mansabs were increased according to each other's circumstances by not less than 20% to 300 or 400%. The subsistence money of the Ahadis, who were Empress's own troops, directly recruited by the Mughal emperor himself, mainly from the emperor's own blood, relatives and tribesmen, was increased by 50%. He also raised the pay of all domestics by 20% and increased the allowance of all the ladies of his father's harem from 20% to 100% according to their condition and relationship. By one stroke of the pen, he confirmed the subsistent lands of the holders of charity lands within the dominions who formed the army of prayer according to the deeds in their position. Along with that, Jahangir gave an order to Miran Sadr Jaha, who according to the emperor is one of the genuine Sayyids of India and who for a long time held the office of Sadr and the Rakbar. He ordered that Miran Sadr should every day produce before him deserving people and finally, Jahangir decided to release all criminals who had been confined and imprisoned for a long time in the forts and prisons. Thus, these were the 12 addicts of the Mughal emperor Jahangir who was a ruler who deserves to have his own space in history, but unfortunately is largely overshadowed by his father's extraordinary reign despite the former's glorious memoirs and his reputation as a great patron of earths. If you enjoyed the video, if you think you have learned a thing or two, make sure to like and subscribe. This is Royal Mughals, signing off.